We hope you're staying safe and keeping healthy. As you might know already, this session is going to be a panel discussion on simplifying PKI in multi-cloud and hybrid deployments. So let me quickly introduce our panelists. We have with us Murli Paranisamy and Derek Amelot. Murli is the Chief Solutions Officer at AppUX and a subject matter expert on cybersecurity and networks. He has also been on the other side of the fence as a customer, so he has hands-on experience solving real-world cybersecurity challenges. He held leadership roles at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Citibank before joining up UX, where he currently works closely with customers to help them in their cybersecurity journey. Derek Amelot is a solution engineer at AppUX. He has worked over 20 years in the PKI industry, supporting, configuring, and implementing PKI in Fortune 500 companies. He has a deep understanding of the PKI space and has helped several customers realize their next in PKI goals. Finally, there's me. I am Nisha, a product marketing manager at AppUX and a moderator for today's session. So a little housekeeping before we begin. If you have questions in the course of the discussion, please type them in the Q question box below the talk window, and I'll bring them up in the Q&A session at the end. So let's get started. So Murli, I'd like you to start with this question. So Gartner has named mission identity management as one of the top 10 security and risk trends for 2021. How do you say cloud PKI aligned with this narrative? Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for folks. I hope you are staying safe in these difficult times. That said, if you look at uh, uh, the Gartner's uh, top 10 trends, right? Uh, PKI, or the mission identity, uh, is is uh, listed as one of the key trends. And there is a, a reason for it, right? Especially with the majority of the workforce working from home uh, in the pandemic and everybody connecting remotely. And that's a, that's a major uh, change in how uh, we used to work, right? And the perimeter in this particular case has completely disappeared. So the cloud, which was already bringing a transformational change into the enterprise deployments, uh, was pushing uh, the boundaries of the perimeter uh, to be extended into the cloud and, and whatnot, right? Now, because of this pandemic, uh, you know, the past one year, uh, you know, the, the, there is there is a, a, a change. There's a change in how, uh, you know, the, there is a foundational change as to how we work, where we work from, uh, and all that, right? I mean, uh, all the crowded cities are are becoming thinner, and then people are moving to uh, suburbs and, and cabins and all that. There's been quite a few articles uh, uh, about how Californians are moving uh, farther away, uh, and and uh, same thing with the New Yorkers uh, and all that. Now, when such a transformational change happens, right, and uh, when uh, users are connecting from all over, one there is there is an important aspect to focus on security uh, as to how to maintain this dispersed. Uh, employees or dispersed uh, users who are connecting. The second one is whenever they are connecting with their systems, one, the user identity becomes critical, meaning uh, obviously uh, passwords and that gets exploited and all that. So there has been pretty uh, good work with the two-factor authentication, multi-factor and all that. Then there is also the machine identity, right? Which is uh, how the machines are authenticated, the laptops that you use, the, the mobile devices uh, and whatnot, right? Uh, so how they are authenticated. Now, when we when we start looking at that, that is where, you know, providing identities for those machines, both from issuing identity perspective and then automating that identity perspective uh, comes to the focus. Not only that, again, the IoT the devices which connect to uh, internet, that is also a huge, uh, there is a huge increase in that, and that is uh, also bringing the focus uh, to PKI, right? So it is, it, it, there is, there is a, a, an acceleration, and then there is also uh, bringing the focus uh, into the PKI, right? Uh, what do you think, Derek? Is there uh, anything 
else that you want to add to this uh, whole change, transformational change? No, it's a good point, Murali. Uh, you've touched on the good points there, especially with COVID, as you mentioned, there's a lot more, uh, you know, identity required for machine and user's identity. Uh, we've seen a big factor when COVID first started. Uh, in my previous job before at UX, we had a big, huge demand in certificates, uh, multi-factor authentication credentials. Uh, everybody's going to have remotely, and it's all about the devices, right? Uh, big surge in IoT uh, and everything else. So you've touched on the main points. And uh, it's only a big uh, change we're seeing, especially now with COVID. Uh, people working from home, uh, huge, huge, huge demand. Uh, we saw a big a resurgent here at AppUX. A lot of clients calling us just to help them uh, get through this and manage their whole ecosystem to what all the CAs they're managing these days. We can't hear you. Uh, might be on mute, Nisha. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay, so, right. So, uh, so Murli and Tarek, so according to you, the ongoing trend is, you know, accelerating cloud adoption, uh, right? So how well does, you know, the traditional on-premise PKI scale with this trend? Uh, um, Murli, yeah, Tarek, here, yeah, please take Derek, over. Okay. Uh, so I think the big thing right now we're seeing it uh, with the traditional on-prem PKI is it fails to factor in the growth in the organization uh, when it comes to adding new devices, infrastructure, IoT, a lot of stuff that we mentioned before. Uh, you know, a lot of PKIs have to be redesigned now uh, from an architecture, business requirement changes. Uh, we're seeing making certificates. You know, we need certificates to be more accessible. Uh, we need that self-service portal that end users can go and manage the cert themselves, request certs. Uh, which you don't see a lot right now, especially when an ecosystem of a cloud PKI. Um, you know, we see new applications coming on daily. Uh, people aren't forecasting, you know, demand for multiple devices, as you said, because of the COVID insurgent. Uh, a lot of people work from home. Uh, so many organizations right now are requiring more than one CA. We've seen that a lot in the industry right now. Uh, everywhere from what side authentication, we're looking at you know, protection data in transit, uh, login authentication, digital document signing, email, IoT, and the list goes on and on. Uh, so we have root CAs right now that acts as a master, uh, multiple, you know, intermediate CAs covering various use cases. Uh, so we need to establish that root trust. So regardless of the root strategies, uh, the first time to ensure that uh, the organization, the PGI can grow, uh, you know, as it needs, uh, as you're implementing more devices and use cases. Uh, so over the years, I've worked with a lot of clients with on-prem PKIs, and they've all run into the same problem, right? Uh, so they're running outdated HSMs. Uh, the physical hardware is outdated. Uh, PKI versions is out of support. Uh, even the OS of PKI is running on is out of support. So a lot of them are reaching, are looking at patching. They need to update it in a few months. Uh, so it's a big challenge for organizations right now to build, uh, maintain, and support everything themselves. Um, so all these employees have to be trained and certified to keep up the scalability of these uh, requirements. Uh, so as companies grow and scale organically through acquisition, uh, they take on a lot of diverse platforms and uh, using different PKI solutions. So all these form factors that we're seeing is basically um, kind of all go back to lack of time, you know, um, you know, to manage the PKI. Uh, there's a the knowledge there for the PKI. And what's the cost of running an on-prem PKI? Right, it's very high for most clients who don't realize. Uh, but if you look at our the ROI compared to a cloud PKI, there's a lot of factors involved, which is a lot of them I mentioned. I mentioned there from you know the cost, the updates, uh, the PS cost. Uh, it just goes on and on and on, right? Uh, so there's only something they certainly need something more agile and more on demand. Uh, we're like a cloud PKI, multi-cloud PKI, where all this is managed for them, right? They manage the updates. Uh, you don't have to worry about you know, three years from now, going from SHA-2 to SHA-3. Uh, we ran into this a few years ago with SHA-1 being deprecated. Um, our clients that I worked for in the past, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was hard for them to move over. Uh, with SHA-1 CA, we had to set up a new CA. We had to market them over, uh, move all the decryption keys over, and the challenge just goes on and on and on. Uh, so we're trying to take that away from clients now, and I see a lot of clients going forward going to a cloud PKI model. Any thoughts on that, Marley? Yeah, so anybody who had built their on-prem PKI, right, when they were building this PKI, they would have never, ever thought
thought about a pandemic of such proportions, right? Where everybody would be working from home and, uh, you know, you couldn't have, uh, and, and even if you have to replace a laptop, right, you cannot get to an office, they wouldn't have thought about such a scenario. And similarly, right, uh, they wouldn't have thought that there would be such a huge cloud adoption and, uh, you know, uh, IOTs and whatnot, especially if they have, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of the on-prem AI would have built, uh, you know, a couple of years ago or, or some even decades ago, right? So they would basically inherit, just upgrade and update uh, as it is. But then there is so many changes and, and so much uh, scale that has come in that uh, it is completely changing, uh, you know, uh, the requirements of a PKI. If you, they were to do that today, right? Uh, how, how would they, how would they look uh, look at it? Right? How would they go about it? Right? Would they have a single issuer ac across the org? Will they have multiple issuers? Not uh, and and not only that, right? Uh, so there is, uh, you know, TLS <laughs> deprecation happening, and and uh, so many changes, right? So I think I think it's a, it's a it's a it's a change, right? There is a uh, there is a a major uh, change in perception from an on-prem PKI and how they've deployed it, uh, and and what was it deployed for at that time versus where we are today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Derek and Murli. So, in this current scenario, I think moving to a cloud PKI would make the most sense, right? Okay. So, Derek. So, with that, what do you think is you know stopping organizations from moving their PKI to the cloud? What do you think are their biggest fears? Well, I think the big thing right now is um, I was working with a lot of government financial institu institutions, and a lot of them haven't fully adopted the cloud. Um, they still want to control their CA keys on premises. Uh, the data physically residing on the cloud providers is not usually a direct control of the, uh, the data they would have, uh, so they're not quite focused on that yet. Um, so a lot of the enterprise are electing to use their encryptions um, internally, uh, their keys to protect their data, their encryption keys and their devices internally. Uh, so it all boils down to a lot of time with securities and policies uh, migrating away from their legacy on-prem PKI, which they've grown comfortable to. Uh, so moving over from their system, a lot of times they'll have to migrate over. Uh, they might keep both systems in parallel, uh, but it's not an easy task to move over. Um, so I think a lot of companies right now are ready for cloud first. Uh, we're seeing that a lot of organizations right now, so they're ready to go cloud PKI. They don't want to have to, you know, do the management themselves. Um, it's also about uh, bringing your own key. You've probably heard this term before. Uh, it's about uh, bringing your own key, your encryption keys, uh, to a, an infrastructure, a cloud provider. Um, so uh, that becomes kind of a norm there. So you have your keys on-prem, uh, and then you have your solution running in like an Azure or an Amazon or a Google Cloud. Uh, so I think as security and policies get implemented and clients are understanding that, uh, it's going to be an easier transition. Um, and there's always... Uh, if you look at the providers on there, um, it's also about connectivity issues. Having it on-prem, they're in control of the connectivity. Um, they have their own SLAs. Um, a lot of PKIs aren't active-active. They're active-passive out there. There's a few that are starting to be active-active. Uh, so there is that outage possibility. Um, that outage doesn't mean that you can't use your keys because uh, the search is still valid based on the CRO lifetime, usually 24, you know, 24 hours. Uh, but it doesn't mean you can't issue keys, revoke keys, or, you know, um, create new keys. Um, so what we're seeing now with the, you know, the cloud providers on there, like, you know, the Amazons, the Google Cloud, and so on, uh, they have pretty high SLA now. You're looking at 99.999%, right? So uh, even if it does go down a bit, you still have that control of your keys. As I said, you may not be able to issue new keys, uh, but it's about having um, – access uh, to the keys when, when required. So I think, um, you know, the challenge right now and the, the issues uh, about security and stuff will start to fade away as it, uh, you know, as the market gets a little stronger and it's starting to understanding. So, you know, HSM has gone a long way. Uh, we work with HSM vendors like Fortanix. Uh, they're big on, you know, bring your own keys, have your keys with them, uh, take it home after you're done. Uh, some services will allow you to uh, basically have your keys on HSM, and then you can move that key to Azure. So you still have ownership of your keys. You're basically just copying your keys to the Azure 
from an Azure perspective for your CA. Um, so that, to me, is a big challenge uh, right now with uh, you know, clients uh, going to a cloud PKI solution. Um, so thank you for the Tarek. Uh, Murthy, could you elaborate a bit more on that? And, uh, you know, and how does the cloud guarantee safety for sensitive search and keys? You know, if we are to assume that these fears are not well founded. Yeah, so, so the, if you, if you look at, uh, you know, when, when cloud was, uh, uh initially picking up. You know, there, there were questions whether who would put their data in the cloud or who would be willing to, you know, move their critical assets to the cloud. But then here we are now where majority of the, uh, of the uh, enterprises are, are having a cloud per strategy where they are pretty much uh, putting all their data uh, into, uh, you know, the, uh, the cloud model, right? Now, when we are talking about PKI, right, this is your crown jewel. This is like the 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 core keys uh, to the kingdom, right? Now, there is definitely a concern when when enterprises look at leveraging a cloud PKI. Now, that said, there are ways where this can be mitigated, like what Derek mentioned, right? Uh, with bring your own keys. Now. With uh, uh, you know uh, Fortanix, uh, Equinix, and uh, Talus Depot, and and those type of offerings, where you sort of uh, continue to uh, have access to the keys, uh, and you're not pretty much uh, uh, you know deploying those keys onto a cloud HSM, but then you have access uh, to to your own keys, and there are ways where you can have. Uh, on-prem HSM as well, and then leverage uh, Cloud PKI, where uh, the 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 HSM and the key is with you, and you can always uh, you know uh, revoke them as needed. Uh, that said, see the 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 whole architecture of uh, uh, you know deployment for a Cloud PKI uh, should be thought through. The key aspect of Cloud or what Cloud brings to the table is agility and scalability, right? How can you be agile, but at the same time scale? And with that, if we have the security piece of it, which is uh, uh, leveraging the bring your own key capability or even leveraging the HSM capability and all that, then we are in a pretty good spot where you get the best of both, right? Where you're able to mitigate the, the challenges or the risks that are there from leveraging the cloud uh, or for cloud PKI. But at the same time, if you have that agility to uh, to be able to revoke and reissue the certificate and the process in place uh, to handle that, right? Then you, uh, you have ways to mitigate that risk. But at the same time, if it is uh, secured in the HSM, which is under your control, uh, you're able to handle that. Now, what we see is a lot more uh, enterprises are uh, are adapting this model, or rather, preferring this approach because of their cloud first strategy. So, because all the uh, organization, the rest of the, the data and the rest of the deployment uh, is in the cloud, they look at leveraging, uh, uh, you know, the the PKI also from the cloud provider uh, as well, right? Um, and if they are using PKI as a service, uh, invariably it is going to be offered from one of the major cloud providers. Uh, or if they are consuming any as a service model from other um, customers, that also is going to be uh, offered from the cloud. So it's I think there is a perceptional shift and there are ways that uh, there could be mitigation controls can be implemented. Uh, and also the blast radius also could be limited with having multiple issuers uh, and whatnot. So, so there is a, a slew of things that is uh, that's uh, that is implemented to mitigate that uh, that perception or the, or the the challenge that they might have. Thank you, Murli. So, Derek, could you uh, throw more light on the challenges that Murli just described? Like, what other challenges could you know enterprises looking to adopt their PKI into the cloud could face? 
Yeah, certainly. Um, so I think a big thing right now, which it comes to, if it comes to Ron Perlman and Cloud PKI, um, for an organization, it's maybe the lack of understanding of the PKI concept and design. So you got to meet uh, compliance and requirements. So you've heard of NIST uh, 800-57, uh, which is the re- which provides the recommendations for the cryptographic key management uh, posted point, which is very important. Uh, so everybody should have a read of that and see if that that's going to comply with your requirements. Um, as Merlin mentioned, and we mentioned before, is the ignoring the importance of an HSM. Uh, so HSM is ignoring, then you won't be FIPS uh, 140 that three level, level three compliant. Uh, so there are services that like you mentioned, most of the cloud providers do provide HSMs or a KMS that you can leverage. So it's always looking to what features, what is available from that standpoint, uh, whether you want to go with a third party uh, to provide your HSM for those services, or if you want to go with the cloud provider's uh, HSM capabilities. Um, it's also understanding uh, what you're going to be getting from those cloud providers, whether it's AWS, Azure, or Google, uh, which, which of them can provide you the requirements that you need for your business. Uh, some of them are very basic. You can issue when you search. They might not have protocols for enrollment, like EST and stuff. So you might want to look at, uh, you know, a CMS solution to offer that uh, that service for you. Um, and then you want to look at integration when your existing PKI infrastructure. Uh, so uh, most people will already have, or you might already have a PKI. Most likely have a Microsoft internal PKI you're leveraging, uh, self-signed search with OpenSSL. Uh, so you want to make sure it's the right model for your organization. Uh, whether you're extending it, replacing it, or migrating to a, a cloud PKI service. Um, does it provide the features you want? And as I mentioned before, it's about choosing um, the right tools and processes uh, for your um, certificate life management tools. Uh, whether you choose a product like AppUX, which will remove you, well, which will move the complexity uh, by wrapping the cert management under uh, one management platform. Uh, so you plug that in front of all your cloud providers, on-prem providers, uh, and then you'll, you'll have maybe the requirements, in, you know, that you're looking for from a policy and compliance standpoint. Uh, you'll be able to use SCAP maybe, uh, register Intune, um, you know, you name it. Uh, we'll, we'll provide you the visibility into the, uh, the PKI. So I think the challenge is that there's a lot of PKI vendors out there, and it's uh, getting the feature set that's required from an organization and seeing the single pane of glass. And that's where AppUX comes in as a consultant and a solution provider to um, be able to give you that. Right, uh, thank you, Derek. So I think we've discussed the problems enough. Now let's dive into the solutions. So Morley, this one is for you. What are some ways organizations can set up their PKI or like multiple PKIs for multi-cloud and hybrid scenarios? Okay. Uh, it's a good topic. It's a uh, we could have a pretty long discussion about it, right? Uh, so the the there is a as as we spoke earlier, right? There is a perceptional change in how the PKI is getting deployed, uh, especially when uh, the use cases are so uh, diverse, right? And the use cases are uh, increasing, and the adoption is uh, is uh, becoming a lot more rapid. If you look at the PKI, it's a foundation for uh, identity, uh, and it is also a foundation for data and transit uh, encryption. Now, what uh, you know, what we have seen, and what we also recommend uh, customers do is uh, look at the use cases, right, and then plan for uh, uh, the islands of PKI in the sense reducing the blast radius by having multiple issuers. So you could have an issue if, if let's say, you're already using a Microsoft uh, PKI. Now, that could be used for uh, automating <coughs> all your uh, Microsoft uh, devices, uh, the Windows uh, laptops and whatnot for auto-enrollment. And, and, and if that works well, uh, you can continue with that for now. But then plan for... Uh, you know, a, a separate cloud PKI for all the cloud-based use cases. Now, if you are using a multi-cloud uh, scenario uh, or a hybrid deployment scenario, then you could either use the cloud PKI for both, uh, you know, uh, uh, hy- for all the hybrid deployments, uh, but then 
uh, whether you want to use a single PKI for all the cloud, or do you want to have multiple uh, issuers, one for Amazon, one for Google, et cetera? That's a, that's a, a different decision based on uh, you know, how the deployments are and how, how your multi-cloud strategy is and whatnot. Uh, but more importantly, you know, having that segregation helps define the roles and responsibilities, define the policies. Especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, a, a short-lived certificate, right? More of a, uh, you know, the, see, we have seen the certificates, uh, the lifetime of certificates reduced from five years to two years to uh, a year now, 13 months uh, and whatnot, uh, to even 30 days, right? Uh, I've had customers looking at a 90-day validity uh, certificate issued as a standard across the organization. Now, all this, all this is possible uh, when, uh, when, when, uh, you, you know, when when you have these multiple issuers, when you're able to uh, handle uh, this. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, you can. Yeah, we can now. We lost you. Oh, okay. Yeah. A second or two. All right. So, not sure what happened. Uh, there is. Okay, we can hear you. We don't see video anymore, but you can okay. go ahead and talk. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Suddenly, there's, there was a hiccup. It said reconnecting. Okay. All right. So, uh, especially when there are uh, when they are used for specific deployments and specific uh, use cases, right? Uh, it it enables you to define different policy sets uh, and and have different controls. Uh, for example, if you are using it for user certificate issuance, right, or even uh, uh, server certificates, uh, or uh, bring your own devices and laptops and whatnot, right, uh, the mobile uh, mobile devices and all that for uh, device identity, you could have different set of policies. Uh, and especially when we have containers and and that type of deployment where the the the, the lifetime of that certificate is, is quite short. Now, it might not work if you have just one PKI across the board for all the organization where your, you know, the CRL list could grow exponentially if you if you are revoking certificates and, and whatnot, um, or if you're using OCSP again, you know, having that central endpoint and all that. Now, the, the, the uh, easier approach or the better approach would be to have an offline route and then have multiple issuers which which would issue these certificates uh, for those specific use cases and and enables you to uh, migrate off uh, as you as there is a need um, and and also uh, it, it enables uh, a lot more flexibility right see if we have seen a lot of those deprecations before, like SHA-1 to SHA-2, we had years to migrate, right? It, it was not like over, over uh, you know, a day or so, right? We had years to migrate. But then that is not the case as we move forward, right? The RSA deprecation which is coming, right? We wouldn't have years to do that. The TLS 1.0 uh, and 1.1 deprecation, we wouldn't have years to do that. And irrespective of that, a new vulnerability, right? It wouldn't mean that we would have years to mitigate those. So we should have that agility to sort of plug uh, the, the challenges that would come up pretty quickly. Uh, and for that, having this uh, uh, this segregated model, this uh, uh, distributed model helps enable that uh, and then move the organization to more of a, a crypto agile uh, platform. And that's where AppUX also comes in to give you that capability as well. Okay. So multi-cloud PKI in itself is quite complex, right? So Derek, could you throw some light on you know the management troubles that enterprises could face? troubles they could face in managing the multi-cloud PKI. 
Yes. Um, so one of the big challenges with a, uh, a multi-cloud PKI is uh, clearly, as you know, it's different interfaces for each vendor, right? You have your pop, uh, public trusted CAs like your Stectigo, your Rentrust, your DigiCerts. Uh, you have a public-facing website portal that you're managing your search for that. And then you'll have your private CAs, um, which you'll be issuing search for your devices, your services, your enterprise. And then you might have another CA uh, with for your IoT devices uh, for management. And then you have your maybe another CA again uh, for your container-based microservice environments. Uh, and then you have your CAs of multiple uh, you know, infrastructure as a service providers, such as your AWS, your Google Clouds. Uh, so you know, really what you need is a single pane of glass, right? You need a certificate management tool that can offer all this. So you put all your PKI and your security organizations control and issuance under one platform. Um, you know, um, you know, getting the right staff, getting them all accustomed to each interface, and uh, and more times than none, you'll have different groups. Um, most organizations I work with have the guys working on the public C certs um, from a public perspective, and then you have people working from their private certs, uh, CA certs. Uh, you got people managing Microsoft CAs with their you know with their AD credentials and you know permissions. Uh, and then you have other ones managing the cloud providers. So if you can put that under one roof, simplify it, um, have a central audit trail. Um, so um, it goes back to a lot of questions, you know, when you look into this, um, you know, when you look into your certificate management tools, uh, is there a central audit trail, right? Um, can individuals in your organization request a new cert from a CA um, or from any CA for that matter, right? Uh, does your does the PKI team have like a role-based access control uh, for for you know for handling the process? Um, is there documentation uh, visibility or is it document visibility uh, from the you know where the search chains across all environments and CAs are? Um, are the private keys stored on an HSM? Are they in a KMS? Are they just in software? Right. So you have different environments, and each environment will have their own. You know, you know, options of storing the the private keys. Um, is your system up to date? Do you have the latest, you know, cryptographic standards? As Molly mentioned, are you still running SHA one? Are you still using RSA ten twenty four? Uh, are you still using TLS one point one? Um, do you have visibility into that? You know, do you know what those certs are? Um, do you have the tools right now to discover, monitor, maybe renew, revoke these certs? Uh, you know, you may know with some certs is from a public perspective because it's on your console um, you know where they're deployed right uh, we've had issues with wall card certs seems like a great idea wall card certs but once you start deploying those in 50 or 100 endpoints where are those wall card certs uh, so this is something you need visibility on too and it's going to go back to you know crypto agility you know uh, where is everything located um, you know how can I find these endpoints um, so that's basically um, you know, things you need to look out for. Uh, so a valid approach to have multiple CAs uh, is for addressing different needs, right? So you do need a single interface, as I'll say again, a single pane of glass with something like AppViewX or Plus that could provide your organization with a strong cert management solution. So you can oversee all these multiple CA environments uh, where they are and have a clear trail audit and manageability going forward. So that's all I have right. for now. Right. Um, so thank you, Derek. So Murli, Derek touched upon crypto agility, right? So how do you think organizations can ensure crypto agility with multi-cloud PKI without relinquishing control? Yeah, see, the, 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 the key aspect, right? When we plan to have this uh, multiple issuers and cloud PKI, the cloud brings that agility and, and scalability and whatnot, right? And also, this multiple issuers and multiple PKIs brings a complexity. Now, that's where you need, uh, you know, a central management and central control, central policy uh, engine uh, so, uh, like AppUX, uh, which will enable you, one, to manage them centrally, right? At the same time, be able to uh, define policy and enforce it. Now, when we talk about crypto agility, it is we being able to uh, adapt to changes quickly, right? And if you were to make those change, changes manually, 
like I mentioned earlier, you know, SHA-1 to SHA-2, a lot of organizations had, uh, you know, hired a couple of consultants to do a lot of work manually. I mean, if they had tooling or if they had uh, AppUX implemented, it's a matter of uh, minutes that they can migrate out of SHA-1, right, and replicate and, and reissue SHA-2 certificates. So having that central management, having that uh, uh, fully automated uh, lifecycle management capability, and having a policy definition and a policy enforcement uh, is the key for enabling crypto agility. Right? Now, in AppUX, we talk about enterprise crypto agility. How can your enterprise be agile? And how can your enterprise be agile in terms of uh, the crypto uh, aspects that you use, right? Whether it is a crypto algorithm, so that it's crypto uh, uh, protocols like TLS uh, and whatnot, or whether it is uh, the the key algorithm like RSA to ECC and whatnot, right? So we basically orchestrate or enable that uh, the, the the ability to move away from those vulnerable. Uh, uh, protocols or algorithms or settings uh, on, on the devices and orchestrate the whole process. And that is an important aspect uh, to, one, reduce complexity and be agile as an enterprise. Um, so thank you for that, Murli. I think we are almost at the end of um, the discussion now. So one last question. So Gartner recently released a report outlining how PKI is set to change with DevOps and multi-cloud and stressed upon CA agnostic management. So what, according to you, does the future look like for you know, cloud PKI? Like, What are some core tenants like the choice of CAs or management tools? How are they going to change? So Derek, if you could take this first. Yeah, so I think this goes back to a lot of questions we talked about before, uh, about having a strong CLM solution to manage all those CAs going forward. Um, right now, we know that a lot of organizations don't have the sufficient IT security staff for a dedicated PKI environment. Uh, thus, uh, cloud PKI becomes a more attractive option right now. Um, some of the PKI as a service providers um, now in the future provide basic CERT requirements, right? Uh, thus, organizations will need to procure a strong CLM solution and manage all the CERTs in their endpoints. Um, so, it's going to be CLM is going to be a center stage providing all the required functionality that may or not be there from a CA uh, cloud instance. So cloud PKI will be um, a great way of mitigating the risks of the PKI uh, to the hosted uh, cloud providers. Uh, it'll provide more of a robust security, you know, as far as complexity availability from an enterprise CA, as long as policy, compliance, and governance is applied to that solution. Uh, so if you have improper cert management, um, you know, and you can't locate that and stuff starts expiring, uh, you lose track of where your certs are, um, especially with a multi-cloud environment, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, so you need to centralize all that, as I mentioned, into one, one, one console and, you know, get reporting, uh, get email notifications um, so you can, you know, stay up to speed and mitigate against, um, you know, um, you know, with the crypto agility, you know, with quantum computing stuff, with stuff, eventually quantum computing is going to come into play where it's going to be able to, you know, decrypt, uh, you know, RSA uh, 2048. Um, we're going to have to go to higher encryption algorithm, and organizations have to be prepared for that. They have to be able to go in there, uh, go into their tools, and update to elliptic the curve or higher algorithm to be able to secure their environment and their endpoints. Um, yeah, see, would you like my, to my take, yeah, please go ahead. See, my, yeah, my, my take on this is see, uh, there are uh, in the Gartner report, right? The Gartner report uh, itself started off as a, uh, as a CA report or the PKI report, and then it sort of extended into CLM side of things as well. So, what I believe is, um, you know, each CA brings a certain uh, character to the table, right? Or rather, they have a certain, uh, you know, expertise, right? Meaning, um, there are different requirements uh, for the organization. For example, uh, you know, a cloud CA, right, brings in a, a fully automated, high-scale, 
uh, a requirement. Uh, and, and Microsoft PTI, which is pretty prevalently used, uh, brings an auto enrollment capability for Windows and and uh, easy to deploy capability uh, and, and all that, right? Uh, so like that, every CA brings a certain uh, set of features, a certain set of capability. Now, as we as we see the the usage increasing, as we see the focus, uh, uh, you know, uh, expanding, then there, there is no single uh, silver bullet to solve the problem in terms of uh, PKI. And not only that, uh, e e there are different use cases which will require different uh, CAs. Now, the the right suggestion would be to to bring the best of breed PKI, best of breed CAs, uh, whether it is Google, whether it is AWS, whether it's Azure, whether it's Entrust or Prime Key or whatnot, right? It doesn't matter. The organization will have will have to choose the right uh, PKI that solves their problem. Uh, but when it comes to uh, you know the automation side of things, right? Unless you have a, a, a CLM, which sort of is CA agnostic, it can integrate with all the CAs sort of bring all that together. It's almost like a, there are multiple bricks, right? Each brick has, has a different quality and different uh, texture and whatnot. But then what you're looking to is is to build a wall. And you need that glue, which sort of, uh, you know, brings all these bricks together to build a wall, right? And that is where the CLM is. And in the Gartner report, you know, they have uh, uh, listed us as one of the, uh, you know, the top ranking uh, vendors. Uh, in terms of automation and the capabilities that we provide. And our goal is to be the glue, and our goal is to make sure we bring that integration with that, our plugin-based architecture, our containerized uh, cloud-native architecture, to bring the, the, the glue faster to the market and enable the next-gen uh, integration model, the next-gen CLM model. Um, thank you for that, Murli. So that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, so we will now be taking questions. So people, if you have any questions, please type them in the question box below your screen, and Murli and Derek would answer them. Okay. We have a couple of questions already. So the first one is, can we use the same PKI implementation for on-premise also? Uh, Murli, I think he was referring to your um, answer to the different types of PKI implementations that you know an enterprise could use for multi-cloud. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. See, the thing, uh, the 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 aspect uh, of what cloud brings to the table is the agility, as I mentioned. Right now, you can definitely extend that to on-prem, and uh, you know that's where AppUX comes in. Where you, the cloud is all about automation, right? And uh, if you want the tooling to automate uh, on on promise, AppUX bridges those ga that gap and then is able to extend your cloud deployment to on prem as well. You can absolutely do that, and we have we have customers uh, doing that uh, today as well. Okay, thank you. And we have another one. Uh, what about cybersecurity elements outside of PKI? How do they factor into this deployment model? Cybersecurity elements outside of PKI. Uh, now, see, the, the, when you talk about cybersecurity, there are quite a few uh, items involved, right? Uh, if you're talking about, uh, you know, cybersecurity which are relevant to PKI, it could be uh, the net scouts of the world, the man in the middle, where you're looking at uh, DDoS mitigation capabilities, uh, uh, you know, data leakage uh, capabilities where you're decrypting and looking at that. That is sort of comes uh, still in the purview of it. Uh, so the, 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 the whole idea is, you know, when we are planning uh, a model, right, you need to look at uh, the, the whole enterprise uh, set of requirements uh, and then, uh, you know, plan the deployment around it. So we, we have a pretty broad solution, right? Within this uh, short time, we can only uh, focus on certain aspects. Uh, so that's what we did. So, I mean, we can definitely have a follow-up. We can talk about 
you know, in each one of those different areas, right, how this model would help and how we are able to tackle that, uh, how we have mitigated it, the customer deployments and all that, uh, quite a few things that we can uh, discuss. Okay, uh, so I think we're running short on time. So if there are any more questions, please, you know, reach out to us and we'll take them offline. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up the session now. So thank you for joining us today and we hope you found it insightful. We'll come up with another great session pretty soon and we hope to see you there. Till then, take care, stay safe and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Munir. Right. Bye, you. guys. Bye.